Hey guys, Richard at Reese.com. Thank you for joining me for this video. This video is something that's very dear to me and very close to my heart and something that I've been wanting to share with you guys for the last few months. A few months ago, I was invited to Florida Aquarium's Center for Conservation and to partake in the year's last spawning event. And this has been a surreal event. And this will be divided into two different parts. And first part will be narrated by Carrie O'Neill of Florida Aquarium and she will talk about everything that has happened that night, what we were expecting, what happened, and the process that has happened throughout the night. The second part will be narrated by me, that's showing everything through my eyes, my lens, and what my thoughts were, and my expectations, and what my thoughts were afterwards. All right guys, without further ado, let me flip this camera around and turn it over to Carrie, where she will explain everything scientifically. Let's go guys. Hey everyone, we're here at the Florida Aquarium Center for Conservation in Apollo Beach, Florida, and it is nine nights after the full moon of August that happened on August 30th, 2023, and we're going to be monitoring three species of brain coral that are native to Florida's coral reef. Boulder brain coral, or Copophilia natans, and the symmetrical brain coral, Pseudodeploria strigosa, and the knobby brain coral, Pseudodeploria clivosa. We were beginning to get a little worried that we weren't going to get any Pseudodeploria clivosa or the knobby brain coral spawn this year. Um, we had a little bit last month, but it wasn't a very good spawn, but this is actually the best spawning we've had from this species ever. So this is really well synchronized and just a really good quantity of spawn. So hopefully we'll be getting a couple hundred thousand larvae out of these corals. So the, all of the species we're watching tonight are hermaphroditic broadcast spawners. So that just means that male and female are in the same colony. And when these corals spawn, they bundle the eggs and sperm together into a buoyant bundle that comes out of the mouth of the polyp and floats up to the surface of the water. And then we will come in and scoop those bundles off of the surface of the water and put them into either a gravy separator or a clear bowl or sometimes even a cooler when there's a lot of spawn. And those bundles will start to break down, which means that all of that sperm will be released out into the water, causing the water to get really, really cloudy. And it actually does get too concentrated very often, so we have to dilute that down. If you don't dilute that sperm in the water, then it will use up all the oxygen. It can be bad for the eggs. It can cause multiple sperm cells to fertilize one egg, which is a problem for development. So the first thing we're really focused on as these bundles are breaking down is making sure that that sperm concentration stays down at about 1 million cells per milliliter, which really really to your eye is, is just a little bit cloudy. So once we have multiple corals mixed together and the sperm is at the right concentration, we'll let those eggs fertilize for about half an hour to 45 minutes. And you'll begin to see that first cell division occur about 45 minutes to an hour after fertilization. And that first cell division, we sometimes call it the butt stage because um, it really is just two cells together and then it will become four cells and eight cells and 16 cells and developing into a embryo that then becomes a swimming coral larvae. With this species, usually by the next morning, you will actually have a modal larvae. So in the lab, one thing that we're checking for is our fertilization rate. So we'll take a subsample of about 100 to 200 eggs, and we'll check how many of those have started to divide. And if, if we're having a good night, it'll be 90 to 95%, sometimes even more of those eggs will actually be fertilized and dividing. And that just means that you have a really healthy culture and that you're not going to be dealing with a lot of breaking down unfertilized eggs that tend to contaminate the culture and make things a lot more difficult over the next couple days. 
So the spawn we had from our boulder brain corals and the symmetrical brain corals tonight, that actually happened in our greenhouses. And even though our greenhouses just get natural light and they do have a bit of light pollution, it is a good enough cue to have most of these corals spawning. Um, we'll get maybe 40 to 50% of the individuals spawn in the greenhouse. Interestingly though, if we put that same species into the controlled spawning lab with really controlled sunrise and sunset and no light pollution and and good moon cues then usually a hundred percent of those individuals will spawn all right guys thank you for watching this video i hope you find this video informational i hope you enjoyed it there is so much work that's being done amazing work by these people at florida aquarium for center for conservation as well as many different institutions around the country that is trying to preserve all the endangered corals and i really believe that this is the way to preserve and conserve our oceans unless we make drastic changes to make our oceans better for the animals that's inside. And I just wanted to share this with you guys and I'm really excited that Carrie and the Florida Aquarium has allowed me to come up and partake in this year's project. And I look forward to releasing the second part of the video for you guys. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave comments down below of what you thought of the whole process and any feedback. All right guys, so thank you for watching the video. I hope you have a great day.